Hello everybody. Two Dexposés, Dexposés. I'm just going to adjust my camera ever so slightly. Give me a second. Yeah, two Dexposés in one week. I know what's going on. Um, this is a slightly special one. It's actually a sponsored one. I was asked to put together a video and a blog post, which will be coming soon, um, looking at what's new in Snagit 2021 and specifically focusing on screenshots for documentation, for technical writers. How is Snagit useful for accomplishing that sort of work? So it seemed appropriate to me for the video component to put it straight to the, the expose stream as a, an appropriate kind of outlet for the video side of that. I'm also recording it as well in this case, so there might be a slightly updated edited version later. We'll see what happens, <laughs> I suppose. So welcome along. Usually I look at the developer experience behind a developer tool. Today I'm going to be looking at the experience behind a, well, not a developer specific tool, but a, a tool aimed at a broader audience and how it might be useful to technical writers. So a little different from, from the usual, but um, we'll see how we get. I'll just have a little bit of coffee. Okay. So I'll jump straight in. Okay, um, hopefully everything is visible. So Snagit. Snagit is a long lasting screenshot software for creating and managing screenshots. Um, quite popular with uh, companies for generating resources, artifacts, assets, whatever word you want to use for uh, explanatory content from support to marketing and to technical writers too. Um, Snagit 2021 was just released a couple of weeks ago. And here's some of the new features specifically in this version. The simplified user interface has been souped up a bit. Um, it has this handy auto feature, which we'll look at soon. This is for making, as you can see in the, the screenshot here, oh, sorry, let me, you can see on my screen here, the um, abstracting away some of the details of a screen so that the reader, the user, just focuses on the parts that are important. And there's custom themes for creating a unified look and feel for your um, screenshot assets that you can then share amongst the teams. Everyone has the same thing. And also this templates feature, which is for gathering images and other assets together to create kind of one pages, to create uh, common workflow documents, things like that. Uh, another feature here is combining images into a video or a GIF. I have actually used the animated GIF feature in Snagit previously fairly extensively, um, but typically recording a video of my screen and then exporting it uh, to a GIF. So this is something slightly different. And then there's a whole kind of assets library um, for pulling out predefined templates, and I guess you can possibly add some of yours as well for using the uh, templates feature up here. Okay, so what is gonna be our test case for this stream? Um, I am going to look at a, an open source tool that I do quite a lot of work on, some contributions and a lot of sort of support work on, that is Veil. Fail is a language linter for English language where you can check text against a style guide, against grammar, against spelling, common rules and things like that. Um, and it has two main components, Veil CLI, which is this one here, which mostly operates on a command line interface, but also integrates with text editors and a whole bunch of other things, continuous integration, things like that. And of course, as I'm recording, someone is banging around in the kitchen, but anyway. <laughs> And there is Veil Server, which is a desktop application that lets you use Veil with things like uh, desktop software, like uh, in theory, in the long term, things like Word, but also the browser and then proprietary software too. So it's kind of a wrapper for sandboxing that a lot of applications want, but also a slight monetization strategy. And then there's also a text editor and IDE extensions, which I will also take a look at. So there's two components. So it's not necessarily a tool that is optimized 
or using with Snagit. Snagit can certainly take screenshots of CLI output and things like that, but it doesn't necessarily, can't necessarily bring very much to them because just the nature of the screenshot is it's not so dynamic or interesting. Um, and I would typically personally actually use something like Eskinema or Terminalizer for those because um, then it gives me a kind of more dynamic output. But I have frequently used Snagit to make animated GIFs of terminal output actually. So that is, that is one thing. Um, so with that, I think, oh yes, now what I'm going to try and do is I'm not going to create a getting started guide for Vale right now, although we do kind of need to create one. I'm going to create image assets that could be part of that. All right then. So here, I will probably um, pop this out for now. Screenshot from somewhere else. <laughs> Let's move that out of the way. Now, the reason I'm going to go full screen here and not just focus on the window is that um, first we want to take screenshots of things. So we kind of need to have other space on the screen. And Snagit by default tends to operate in this uh, pop up up here. So we kind of need the whole screen. Hopefully that is visible enough. Um, not sure if there's too much I can change at this point. Obviously, a whole lot of space down here we don't really need, but I think that's okay. Let's see how we go. Okay, so the main interface has not changed too much. You'll also notice as you move around menus, you'll see this new in the blue text in a few places. Uh, I think because I've already clicked on quite a few of them, you don't see as many. Um, that will show you some of the new features in Snagit 2021. A lot of the other things like preferences, etc., are much the same. And the overall interface looks slightly similar. There's this new applications collection here, which you'll, you'll see sort of get to work later. Uh, most, in, most generally, the, the most common feature we will use are things like uh, capture. Create is where a lot of the new functionality lies. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then the editor, of course. We don't really have anything here right now. So first and foremost, I am going to create a style. So a new theme. Now I'm actually going to need that just as I've already got rid of it. I'm going to need that back. Okay, Vale doesn't really have a particularly strong style, but we'll pick up some, so we're doing a bit too much, we'll pick up some colors. So we have the basic and the urban inbuilt styles here. So we'll just click on the cog and click new theme. Give it a name. And we can add up to eight colors and we'll see the preview here change as we go. I'm going to leave shadow enabled uh, as a command line developer tool. Vail is fairly flat in terms of interface. So I kind of want to um, keep that shadow just to make things pop out a bit. So let's maybe pick that blue first. So here we can pop this out. We can get a standard sort of color picker. Also a little, um, quite helpful little widget there. There we go. And um, I will also pick out the average color of the text here, which is not completely black, I don't think. It's mostly, but not completely. <laughs> also one uh, that's not 100% sure if this is actually pretty much the same. Let's get this kind of shade of gray there. And that light gray is probably fine. Um, doesn't stand out the most. I don't know if there's any other colors sort of around that could be useful. Uh, don't think so. It's lots of shades of gray, really. Maybe let's take this box here as well. I think that's pretty much the same, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Fine, so then we can see a preview of the elements we're creating here. Let's also change the font. I'm gonna change the font to Helvetica. Regular is fine. And then we can create our theme. And we can always go here to edit it and also export it and export individual styles as well to our teammate. Okay. So that's our style created. That was relatively easy. We can see a lot of the palette we created pre-filled here. Oops, just 
simply added something. And the shapes, and also change the shadow. Um, we can see the various sort of predefined objects here ready and waiting for us to basically with the styles and colors and palette we created, they're waiting for us. Okay, so let's take some screenshots. I think to begin, I'm going to start with um, Veil Server, actually. Let's open up that. And that also runs in a menu bar. <laughs> so first, I think we can fire up the menu snapshot tool. So, and you can also see here in the capture box, not a massive amount has changed here, but I'm going to point out a few useful things. Um, you have the all-in-one, the image and the video. Oops, I'll just pop down there when you go to video. It's slightly, okay. <laughs> That's not sure why it went down there. Can we, can you come back? Come back. Here we go. Image. So we have a variety of different options here. Fixed region, which I will actually come back to in a minute. Panoramic is kind of a, a scrolling view. Grab text to actually convert uh, areas of text into on a screen into text. Uh, full screen, full screen. Web pages, individual web pages. Mission control brings you up the um, sort of equivalent to mission control on a Mac. I don't think it, there is an option for it on the Windows version of Snagit. Menu and webcam. I won't fire up webcam. I was experimenting with this yesterday. And whilst you can do quite a lot of video and audio work with Snagit, I'm obviously already using video and audio. And when I experiment with that, I got all sorts of not nonsense happened. So I'm not going to go down that path. But trust me, you can. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually, I could switch to my indoor camera instead of my external camera, but I don't want to tempt fate. Let's do the menu. So you can also add effects here and share options. And if you have a preset here that you use a lot, say menu with, uh, I don't know, fade, then you can actually save these settings as presets if you're gonna use them all the time. I'm quite sure why that keeps popping back and down slightly. There we go. And then you can pick from the, the presets. <laughs> they, they show this list down the bottom. There we go, anyway. So for example, I don't know why that keeps popping down, but there we go. So here, and also add a keyboard shortcut, things like that. So that's quite useful. It's something you use a lot. I don't know why it keeps doing that. <laughs> All right, so let's go for the menu. Um, we will capture the cursor. We will preview an editor. We won't worry about copying to clipboard. So this actually says open a menu and press Control, Shift, and E. And hopefully the E key is nestling right underneath something at the moment, slightly in the way. I might use my other keyboard over here. Okay, all right. So open the menu we want to capture, which is this file server menu. And there, it just basically picks off the, um, the menu. Uh, now, interestingly, I did find, and this is not really a Snagit issue, not all applications are created equally, and we're gonna discover that a bit more in a minute. Um, so for example, if I went to capture, so this is a menu from iStat menu. It, it is a menu, but it's a weird menu. We will notice that, yeah, it cannot find the menu. This is not really a problem with Snagit. It's the nature of applications not all being created the same. I think obviously using some kind of system, uh, API to capture those menus. Anyway, I won't too much about that. Let's now dig into the preferences of Veil Server, and we're going to take screenshots of each of these preference panes. And here is another caveat or a follow-up to what I was just talking about with the fact that not all applications are created equally. So, fixed region. If we look at this, typically, oh no, sorry had a preset I was working with yesterday. There we go, you can also set um, fixed width and height. We will do that in a minute. Remember those numbers, 5, 10 by 4, 30, okay. And if you notice on quote unquote proper applications, 
it's able to just automatically jump in. And if I had other things open, you'd see the same thing. But if I come down to the Veil server window, it doesn't work. And I'm not sure if that's because this is a preference window or if that's because this, I think, was created with uh, Qt. And um, again, Snagit can't quite recognize the, uh, the dimensions. So what we actually need is a fixed region. And you can, that's why I ended up doing this to sort of get a fixed. And we could also set the position. I don't think I'm going to right now. So we basically get a predefined window and we go snapshot, go to the next one. Now, in theory, we could have assigned a custom shortcut to this now, but it's control shift C. We have it again for the next window. Two, number three, control shift C. Extensions. Oh, we are capturing the cursor. Maybe I shouldn't have captured the cursor. Actually, now I see that. Yeah, good point. Uh, come on. And finally, oh, it's still there. That's strange. Did I not disable that? I'll show you another useful feature in a minute, but. Um, Hmm. I thought that was turned off. It is turned off. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. It's, it's an advantage to use a, a different feature potentially in a minute. Okay. Yeah, the mouse is there. Interesting. So we have our screenshots. Now, this could be an interesting. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that one. There we go. Let's click in that cross there. Um, we could experiment here. A bit bigger. We could experiment here with the simplified user interface. So this lets us do um, picked from the image colors here or from the quick styles here. We could Sort of drag in our own simplifying features like this, for example, um, or we can do the auto simplify, which works pretty well. Now, as you can see, for something like this interface, it doesn't really make sense. Um, maybe like this one might be slightly better, but still, yeah, this 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 interface is is too specific to want to do that. But um, yeah, that's how that works pretty much. Um, so I wouldn't mind going back, let's see, let's try and get rid of this mouse cursor. Now, there are options for this. I have to remember what it is exactly. Um, it is... <laughs> I was looking at this the other day and I can't entirely remember the feature now. It is... the... So it actually can identify components and we can see various things we can actually move and get rid of. So this, we could just simply, ooh, not, hmm, not quite there, is it? Interesting. Kind of want to get rid of it. Left a little bit of a, of, um, Legacy thing there. Hmm. That's a shame. Um, we could maybe up the detail. Uh, it's, it's just a little. Uh, oh, hang on. I think. Ah. Maybe it's just, no, it's not. Damn. I might be able to, ah, I think we might be able to finesse. I don't want to spend too long on this, but no. It's 
not quite perfect, but it's, it's not bad actually. And similarly for, I think that one's gonna be harder. Uh, let's see. I just removed something, I'm not sure what it was. <laughs> It's not. It's it's a powerful tool, but it does have limitations, of course. Uh, let's try that again. No, I think it's too close. Our better approach is to probably just do that again. I suppose <laughs> it's probably quicker. Sometimes that's the case. Um, It's worth trying quickly with that one. Yeah, I think that's too difficult. There's too much part of it. Yeah. Okay, anyway, we can always redo those uh, later. We'll just keep going for now. So, um, the, what was the next thing I wanted to do? We could do some cropping maybe I think we'll leave it for now um, but cropping tools work pretty much how you would expect really for example <laughs> um, there's features like this cutout which is not particularly useful for this screenshot but is useful for others when you have a long page and you can do something like that um, Pen and highlighter is, is sort of what you would expect. The steps we'll come to in a minute, eraser and magnify. Now magnify is an, an interesting one. Um, I may, I'll show you quickly here in case we don't have time, but so there's pretty much, let's say uh, we want to highlight that and we get the kind of zoomed in and you can increase the Move it around and change the focus, etc. etc. So, if we wanted to go there, we can do that. We can change the style here. So, there's maybe not that one, uh, but yeah, you get the point. You can, it doesn't really work on this screenshot, but you see what I mean. You can also do things like that square or around a circle's equivalent of that there, etc. etc. We can change the magnification something insane <laughs> we can bring the line width down a little so that I quite like that actually um, and we're all using this with our defined style as well so maybe we'll change the blue to that and then we could add um, yeah let's add a uh, call out Quite sure I'm saying click that. <laughs> For example, there we are zoomed in a little at the moment, and we can yeah change various things about the font and stuff like that here. For example, change the padding. Oops. Quite sure what I did there. I can do done something slightly odd with the. Uh, <laughs> uh, ah. One sec. Do you believe there is a no? Uh, there might have been no. Anyway, okay, and um, also things like uh, quick effects for. image two so we can see we've added these edges here uh, capture info down here uh, and you can see there's various parameters on them here fade etc etc probably not what we need right now but anyway you get the point so um, what else is useful here Things like adding tags so we could say for example um, 
plain text, favorites, arrow, any other features I wanted to point out. I'll consult my notebook. I had a notebook here with various things I wanted to go through. We have looked at template themes. Ah, yes, the step-by-step. -step. So I'll go back to the library for now. There's also, you can see here, um, it's picked up the application. Now, this is also interesting. Uh, it is really showing we're having a slight issue with that um, cute application. We'll see what happens later with some of the other things we're going to do. But also the tags I've added myself. So I'm going to pick. OK, so here we can have image from template or video from images. Let's do the image from template first. And here's some of the pre-built templates and we can also get more from the TechSmith um, assets library as well. But as we have quite a few screenshots here, let's go for this one. And here we can see we get our um, sort of using our predefined styles. I think I'm going to change this to be a little bit more colorful and make it the blue. And here we just drop the images on. So now it does a reasonable job at trying to fill them in here, but I don't necessarily have optimal images for this. Um, and we can see the normal properties here. Um, I'd love to have some sort of resize to the box feature, I think. But um, that, yeah, we can see it here. I would rather, yeah, it's a shame. I have to kind of do this myself. Uh, it's, um, I would like to do, I don't know if there's, for resizing trim hmm that's something I would like to have is to be able to just resize this myself but I can do it that way yeah, I don't have an optimal image really I think that's a bit stretched we'll just leave it for now um, let's put in the other one where were we etc etc um, drag to swap so we can just swap them over like that um, pop that in there uh, pop that in there and we can add captions here etc etc you get the idea and then we can export this in a variety of ways I also like the way that uh, Snagit integrates with all the default share uh, share API, I'm not sure what it's exactly called in uh, macOS as well. Um, or I do believe there was something I saw a minute ago around uh, flattening. Yeah, but probably just export to, for example, a to file to PDF is something we'd want to do. So PDF, for example. kind of know what we're going to see here. Yep, pretty much. Okay, um, so that's that. Let's have a, another look at the, and this also goes into our uh, um, library here. So the other option is this create videos from images. This fills up a lot of the screen. Let me just bring that to it's a little easier to see. There we go. Um, yeah, we get this 
Hello, strange. I'm not quite sure what this... Ah, so I see. What's happening here is it's... Ah, okay. Yeah. It's taking this canvas size that's defined here, which we could maybe... Can I change it? Don't seem to be able to change it. Cancel. Oh. Okay. Um. Hmm. Seems to want to do that size. Okay, I'm going to move this again. <laughs> so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Okay. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Seems to work. Um. Yeah, I don't know why I can't resize this. Hmm. Interesting. But basically this provides us with a uh, tool. We can resize these, these images as well. A tool to see what we're looking at and record as we go. You can see here that the microphone is, is detected from um, the one I'm using. Oops, I don't want to have that same problem I had last time. I just checked that I'm still getting audio. Yes, good. <laughs> so this is picking up my internal microphone. Um, do we want the cursor on or off? Background color. That would be nice to have uh, transparent. But it's also interesting here that we don't have um, the theme that we defined here. I think, or do we? Not sure. I don't know. Um, and then we can hit record. I don't really want to record audio just in case it messes things up. <laughs> we get the standard countdown and we're pretty much just narrating, clicking through, really. For example. And then stop. Yeah. And then from here we can export to GIF. We can do cutting, uh, change the volume, things like that. Um, so that's a lot like capturing video, um, but just does it from images instead of you capturing it yourself, which is what I've done before. Um, there's also the Sorry, the create. Um, oh, no, that's what we just did. Sorry. Okay, we'll go back to the library. Okay, so um, one of the other interesting features I did see was this is slightly hard for me to. Okay, let's. Um, yeah. So we can actually, for example, we just add some. Okay, let's just maybe make that a little larger. Okay, um, what we can actually do, go back to the library, pick that, and I don't know if it's lurking right down the bottom here, there's this translate feature, which actually lets you extract the call out text for translation. So we could then create different versions of this in different languages. Um, yeah, which is quite useful. So we could now create different language versions, um, and then, oh no, and then export them out from here, which is a quite nice way of. I was hoping for a second it would do automatic translation, but <laughs> it's not really. What, uh, oops, that's not really what uh, Snagit is there for, I suppose. But that could be useful for people who do localizations. Um, and yeah, you can see the project file here. Okay. Um, now we looked at all, a lot of the new features. I'm going to look now at a couple of, yeah. So 
All right, so we've got our screenshots for Veil server so far. I'm also just going to take one of the dashboard, which is um, a browser window here. For example, let's just get into a window with a bit more going on. No. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> it's not a Snagit problem. It's a, it's a problem with my setup. Um, let's just get to it. No. Okay. Um, just want to get something with a bit more going on. All right, that's good. So, and we will take a web page screenshot. Aha, so this actually takes the URL, um, which is interesting. Bring the URL to the capture window, the menu bar, paste a link. Let's see. Maybe it uses some kind of headless browser. Yeah. So that's actually quite a nice, clear window. Right, the fonts look slight. Oh, it's zoomed out. Maybe that's. Yeah, okay. Uh, fonts do look slightly different. It's also missing something here. And this is a slightly more interesting window, I suppose. Um, it's always the problem with these sort of some of these tools you do. If there's JavaScript and things like that, there might be some issues. Um, I mean, I bet the simplify here will work quite nicely to a point. Yeah, it's also this one is left behind, strangely. Um, it's also worth experimenting with the, yeah. get a balance there that suits you nicely. I think in this case I may stick with the typical here actually. Oh, I've still got the fixed size. I keep, <laughs> I keep forgetting. There we go. And then we can just click there and we get that part instead. Yeah, I think I prefer that in this case actually. Um, and we'll crop it up there. Nice. And we can also add things like um, step one, step two, step three, for example. Just using this feature here, which is pretty nice. Um, and we can erase elements that we've just put down, as you can see there. Um, now let's see, I wonder, actually no, I wonder. Ah, dang, <laughs> that's a shame. I was hoping it would readjust the uh, values there. Okay, and um, I wonder as well, just out of interest, we could try this feature again. Just, uh, yeah, I, you know that it, it's just a little bit too far over. There we go. We've, we've manipulated the images. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. And there's a lot of other tools here I haven't really touched on, but I think you mostly probably understand. Okay, let's have a look then at the um, terminal version. I'm going to just get a new window. Okay. So this is a feature I probably actually use quite a lot. Uh, I will get the video and yeah, warnings is going to, I didn't jump down that time. Good. A region, a full screen, share, webcam off. No, because that might ruin things a little bit. Uh, we don't want to record any audio. No, so we'll, we'll capture. We can pick the window and we just hit record when we're ready. Okay, so I will, oh, I can't remember what I needed to look at. Um, I'll go into, 
I'm in the wrong folder, but we can edit all this in a minute. I am intentionally doing the wrong thing here. I know often I'm unintentionally doing the wrong thing. But in this case, I'm actually doing the wrong thing on purpose. <laughs> I promise. And we'll avail writing, for example. And then we see results. So that's kind of everything we wanted, but we need to do a bit of trimming, but we'll come to that. So let's stop. And uh, I should have, I actually need to always, I have a, a special, um, a special profile on my item for removing the transparency, which I forgot to do. So there we go. Um, we will go up to where we actually wanted things. Okay, we'll cut that. And now we have what we actually want. Uh, we can also cut this part too. And this is a video, that's fine, but it probably isn't needed. So we can make that into an animated GIF. Screen video, we have different options here. And that gives us more control there. But let's just go for that. Create, wait a second. We have an animated GIF instead, which I anticipate between the two of them. Oh, it's not a fair comparison, that's also longer, but yeah, it should be a smaller file size. And you can see this, now we've started using some actual applications. This is starting to fill out a bit quite nicely. Um, what else? Let's, yeah, let's also Visual Studio Code. I'll have to zoom in a little here, mostly for so you can see. And I'll uh, actually, I'm going to have to do that again. I'll open. Okay, let's just do that. Yep. Let's, um... Now I have been having some issues with. Veil not firing at certain times in Visual Studio Code. Hoping that's not gonna be a problem. No, it's not good, you can really tell. So, what we might do is take a screenshot of this. Now I need to bring down the zoom <laughs> to default. Um, and we'll do the shortcut, and that, as you can see, is picking up the difference between the two things there. We can also go full screen. Let's just go for that. We can also, I don't know if you can see down in the bottom corner, um, there's keyboard shortcuts as well. We can toggle uh, guides. It doesn't seem to be working for me and magnifying oh that's the magnifier there we go so um, i am mostly happy with that region so i'll just click there oh i still had video on <laughs> Jeez. okay let's do that again there we go right and that would be probably one i would change that keyboard shortcut for i think and that is possible here <laughs> that is two oops oh dear okay that's um yeah, I'd probably reconfigure that as a different preset, actually. Anyway, let's do that. Okay, perfect. And this might be a case where we would want to look at the simplifier, I think, for this side here, maybe. Um, I don't know why we also don't have our style here. I suppose we could, no, I have to then save it. Okay, interesting. Um, wouldn't mind yeah, doing this here. So this is a good use case for it. So we can abstract out the ones that aren't relevant. We could also do the same thing here, for example. Um, yeah, see that's quite a nice use case for it. And I think in uh, this case, here is definitely a good use case for the magnifier to draw attention to this feature, but we're going to need a 
Kuevan E I could move, or maybe I can. Ah, oh, we can, there we go. Good, uh, it's a little uh, pixelated. I guess that's the image we took. Let me see. Ah, there we go, it's okay, zoomed in. That's not being magnified very much, is it? <laughs> uh, uh, I wonder if we can make this a little smaller. I'd like to make this box a little smaller. Um, hmm. I don't know why I can't select that all of a sudden. I could a minute ago. Yeah, I can move this. I would really like to resize this, I think. Maybe it just, oh, okay. All right, fair enough. That makes sense. <laughs> there we go. It's better. And then we can move, no. Right. What I want to do is move just this part. Ah, there we go. All right, so click that part there. There we go, good. Because that's something that people miss quite a lot. Uh, and then we can obviously annotate all the various things here. So I would say, uh, yeah, and uh, some text, of course, etc., etc. So you get the idea. Nice. Uh, and we can crop that, of course, now. There. Okay. Um, what else did I want to show? Annotations, audio. There is obviously the option to add audio describing images. I will not tempt fate by having multiple things recording at the same time. I did a test video yesterday. It ended up with static on everything when I did that on the recording. Um, I think that is most things I wanted to cover. Um, the other thing probably is once you've done all this, of course, how do you get access to the file? So we've got this, we now want to put it somewhere. Um, we can just go into Finder, but this is um, Snagit file projects, which is not very universal format, of course. <laughs> um, but we can then export from here. So we can share to file, we can export. We can do the language things I mentioned earlier. We can also apply the template. Um, let's ex look at the export options. We can change the file name. We can add new effects. Let's add um, a border, why not? And we can change the format. I will change, actually I want to keep it as a PNG and put it in downloads for now. I don't know why I don't see a Preview would be nice, but okay. Export that. <laughs> okay, and there we go. That's the image we just saw. We can also do the same thing from here, and we get a simpler interface. We can also do sharing. Uh, straight to locations if you use any of these. Um, I'm not sure how useful some will be for you, but uh, there's options there. Always intrigued to know what more would be. Ah, okay, so you can define them here and add uh, YouTube, for example, would be quite useful for me. Box to an application, a custom application would be quite useful. And a whole other bunch of options here. Again, default settings, keyboard shortcuts, etc., etc. I can sign in to YouTube, into Dropbox, into Drive, etc., etc. Okay, um, I think that was everything I wanted to cover. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Let me quickly read.
recap. Um, yeah, we looked at the main features here. We had a look at that, we had a look at that. We looked at the magnifier. Yeah, I think we are mostly here. One of the other interesting options I toggle on and off is the, where is it? Um, no, where are we? Uh, oh yes, system overriding the system screenshot thing. I don't enable that because I like to do, actually most of the time I want to take screenshots and add them to Evernote um, for various reasons. <laughs> Let's go with it. Um, yeah, so that's uh, one thing that is useful there if you find that you end up with just screenshots just everywhere, as a lot of people do. I think the other thing we didn't really look at was very quickly this all-in-one. Just kind of gives you a bunch of things together. Yeah, we pretty much get... Um, yeah, this is the scrolling option in particular here, which is... Uh, is always quite a cool one actually and you can see again down in the bottom corner toggling the magnifier capturing full screen multiple regions um which i might try in a minute and then yeah <laughs> so here we get the panoramic capture capture any scrolling location top to bottom or side to side got it um, so we click that, or we click record a video, or we click capture an image. So this is the all-in-one one, but I think this is one of the easiest ways to get to the panoramic. So yeah, this is giving us a quick uh, overview using that good old simplified interface. Yeah, I think I've got it. Um, click start. So this is kind of interesting if you have a lack of space, actually more than anything. We could go from left to, oops. So went backwards accidentally. Curse that Apple mouse. <laughs> and this will make us a, yeah, it makes us this whole image here. Those look great apart from the fact I went backwards, of course. <laughs> Which is partially my fault there. Uh, yeah, that was my fault there for somewhat messing that up. You could. Try that again, maybe. <laughs> Curse that mouse button. Uh, full screen or region. I can also get a fixed region. Yeah, I think that's basically what we're going to create anyway. I'm intrigued to see this selecting multiple regions. So um, we can create one here and we can create one here. I'm intrigued to know what this is going to look like. <laughs> and then, sp oh, that's not what I expected. Okay. Sure. Let's try that again. Hold down, I guess. Um, hold down. No. Okay. I'm not quite uh, <laughs> figuring out how to do that there. Uh, let's have one more try. So, command is working for me. Drag a region, drag a region. The space part is, hmm. it's not letting me do the pan, I thought that would be the panoramic, but okay, okay, that makes, it makes sense, I suppose. Space didn't really trigger, but um, yeah. Um, and let's just do the uh, panoramic again. I do like that one, it is good fun. Uh, we can do something weird and wonderful here. Yeah. That's how we can get a large window in. I think basically if I just keep going up and down, it just sort of refined the image we already have. So yeah, that's how we can get a long file. Or maybe not. Maybe going backwards and forwards isn't a good idea. I'll try that one last time. This is not a new feature I should point out. <laughs> I haven't, need, haven't had a need to use it so much. I don't tend to take screenshots of browsers. So I think we just want to go right down there. And we should get the result we expect. Yep, there we go. And I say, oh no, that's too long. We can do the good old cutout. There we go. Cool. 
All right. Um, I think then that is everything I pretty much wanted to cover. So, of course, the big question is, is it useful to you? Um, it's not the most expensive tool. Um, there are other options. There are many other options. Um, yeah, I think if you already have a version of Snagit, it's certainly worthwhile. Um, if you're looking for something with a bit more than your inbuilt editor or you know, screenshot creator, then it's also something worth considering. If you already have something else, then it's obviously a question for you to, to ask yourself. Um, it updates quite regularly. I do like the animated GIF option is something that I specifically use quite a lot. And also the ability to edit them quite easily. Believe me, actually editing animated GIFs is surprisingly difficult in other tools like Photoshop. It's an extremely slow process. So that's also quite useful. The finesse you get over the capture, I also find quite useful. And the kind of auto snapping you get. Um, the menu capturing is also quite useful. So there's a, a few features here that I personally find quite useful that the inbuilt screenshot tool in macOS, which is also quite good, does not have. Um, so that's some things, the custom keyboard shortcuts, the quick access to uh, presets is also quite useful to me. Um, so, Now, I should say a big thank you to TechSmith for, um, for helping me put together this video and uh, giving me a copy of the, the new version of Snagit to play with and experiment with as well and give you this feedback. I hope that anyone out there looking to make screenshots gives it a try, tries the trial. I'm happy if you have any questions to ask it in the comments underneath the video. And I will put together a blog post as well very soon um, of a, a <laughs> highlights of this, this rambling uh, 59 minutes <laughs> with some of my favorite features and things I found to do. And um, if you enjoyed this video, you can find many more in the Dexpose playlist on YouTube or on the Twitch channel. And uh, I'll see you again next week for a main normal, one of my more normal shows. And you can also uh, keep an eye on my YouTube channel and my website. You can see the links down in the bottom corner for uh, other streams and videos and podcasts and blog posts I do. So thank you once again very much uh, to TechSmith. I'm also trialing uh, another one of their applications, which is something quite different, which I look forward to reporting back on soon as well. And until the next expose next week. Thank you very much for joining me.